What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are very very lucky to be opening up a pack of the original Modern Masters released in 2013. This is uh, notoriously the best Modern Master sets but not only that it's one of the best sets in recent somewhat recent years of Magic's history. It's a really really great set. Lots of great value in this one. We've opened it a couple times so I'm really stoked to be opening it again. Of course we're going to look at this from a draft perspective so we'll hopefully be able to figure out what our first round draft pick will be. Uh, if we were drafting this set and there are very defined archetypes that we'll talk about throughout as well so our first card here giant dusk wasp it is a three three for three and two green it has flying you also can suspend this uh, for one and a green so suspend four rather than paying the cost of the card from your hand you may pay one and a green exile it with four time counters on it and then at the beginning of your upkeep remove a time counter when the last one is removed cast it without paying its mana cost it also gains haste uh, so really interesting mechanic lots of really fun stuff this is originally in like the time spiral block if i'm not mistaken uh, interesting card uh, not super high priority in my opinion uh, it's a perfectly fine flyer but there are much more high le higher level cards in this set so this isn't necessarily what i'm looking at to first pick <clears throat> Uh, Deep Cavern Imp is a 2-2 for 2 and a black. It has flying and haste. It also has echo, so you have to discard a card at the beginning of your upkeep if this came under your control since the beginning of your last upkeep. Otherwise, you sacrifice it. So basically what that means is the turn after you play it, uh, on your upkeep, you're going to have to discard a card. Otherwise, you have to sacrifice uh, the Imp, which is really interesting. Uh, sorry for the little camera shake there. Uh, really interesting mechanic. Uh, it basically just gave a higher price to certain things. This is a perfectly okay flyer. Uh, it does have haste, so it's going to be able to get in for two damage no matter what, uh, which is good. Uh, but honestly, again, there's so much more more high priority, bigger, bigger things that you can do in this set that uh, this just really is not high up on the list. Uh, Amru Seekers is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a white. It can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or white creatures. Uh, interesting mechanic here, just that it's a very, very evasive 2-drop. Uh, there are a lot of artifacts in this set. Uh, affinity for artifacts is definitely going to be one of the things that you expect to be up against if you're drafting this set. Uh, or even be in uh, at some point. Uh, and so for that reason, I don't really like this card because that's such a prominent archetype. Uh, it seems really, really bad because a lot of the decks end up with artifact creatures, even if they're not really in the affinity deck, there's still some useful ones outside of that that uh, archetype. And so for that reason, this card not super great on the list, definitely worse than the other two cards, in my opinion, that we have seen. Uh, but we're still on the hunt for something a little more uh, spectacular. Uh, Lava Spike, very classic card. One red for a sorcery. It is an arcane spell, uh, which is worth noting you can do some spliced arcane stuff in this set. Uh, it deals three damage to target player. Very, very straightforward card. Something that uh, we see a lot with things like Lightning Bolt. They just go straight to the face a lot of the time. Uh, and in this case, Lava Spike literally has to go straight to the face. So uh, pretty good though. I like this. It's a very high damage spell. So in an aggro deck, this is exactly the kind of thing that you would want. Uh, not necessarily crazy powerful, but it is very, very efficient. So far, it's going to be the pick for me. Uh, but there's definitely, again, still better things that we're expecting to be able to do. Uh, Erratic Mutation is an instant. Uh, for two and a blue, choose target creature. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card. That creature gets plus X minus X until end of turn, where X is that card's converted mana cost. Put all cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order. This is a really interesting card because you can technically use it as a removal spell or a pump spell, uh, depending on whose, tar whose creature you're targeting. You can target your own pump it up, potentially, uh, and then potentially use it on your opponent's creature and then destroy their creature depending on the card that you flip. Obviously, it's very highly uh, debated because it's on the top of your deck. You have no idea what's going to be on there. Uh, it could be that you only give a buff of two or a decrease of toughness of two or something like that, where it also could be a huge, huge power boost if you've got high CMC cards in your deck. Uh, so this is a card that's very, very focused on the deck that you're building itself. I would rather have cards later, like this picked up later on, depending on the cards that I pick up. Uh, for the actual deck itself. So not a first round pick, a very, very volatile card for sure, uh, but one that you could feasibly run depending on the deck that you're in. 
uh sentinel sentinel wood uh readers i hope i'm saying that correctly i do apologize uh it's a one four for two and a green it does have kicker so you can pay two and a green as you play this spell uh for a total of six and then if it was kicked you draw two cards uh, so this is a really interesting card for green uh, it's a card that draws you more cards which in green is obviously not really the normal theme uh, it's very very good for that reason uh, but that being said it is a common you're expecting to see more of these later in the pack it's not a high priority pick by any means but it does help you uh, function in those green decks where they tend to fizzle out maybe if they don't have any card draw this kind of fills that role while also playing the role of green which is just a a creature. I mean, it's just a 1-4 for 3. Obviously not the power and toughness ratio that you'd like, but you're not really playing it for that reason. Uh, you're really playing it to be able to draw two cards, so you really would be oftentimes playing this on 6. Uh, if not, you're ramping into it. So, uh, for that reason, this is actually a perfectly great green card. I would definitely run this if I'm in a green deck, uh, but I'd rather again be established. It's not a reason to be in green by any means. <laughs> Uh, Aether Spellbomb is an artifact for one of any color. You can pay a blue and sacrifice it to return target creature to its owner's hand. You can also pay one and sacrifice it to draw a card. Oftentimes, uh, these are really, really lucrative cards. The spell bombs in general a lot of the times are. Uh, and so it's really, really nice to have even one or two of these in the, in the colors that you are in. Uh, this one obviously serves as a, either a tempo play or just a draw spell. Uh, and it also helps with the affinity for artifacts. So what's really nice is being in that affinity deck, you can kind of run a lot of different colors of mana. It's very common to see that. Uh, and so you can splash any of these spell bombs that you would like. And so that's really where they're at their best. Obviously in this color, if you were in blue, it's a perfectly fine one drop as well. It's not anything spectacular, but it, is, it does give you a little bit of either card draw or tempo, depending on what you need at that time. And because it's only one mana to use not only the card just to play it, but then use either effect, it's really not that big of an efficiency drop in terms of if you're playing something on your turn, you're looking to play something else as well, but you don't necessarily have the pieces you need. This helps you draw into them or it helps you bounce their spell and then maybe follow it up with another play. That's really, really good. So I do like it for that reason. I'd still rather have Lava Spike. It's just, <coughs> excuse me. A little bit more of a powerful card in my opinion uh, because it's just straight up three damage which is great so for that reason I'd rather take that <coughs> uh, Saltfield recluse is a one two for two and a white you can tap it and target creature gets minus two minus zero until the end of the turn I actually really 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 like this card uh, I know it's kind of weird but the reason being having this out means that your opponent always has to think about this in combat uh, you can always neuter something on their side of the field, and that means you're going to have more favorable blocks more of the time. This is great for enabling a lot of aggressive strategies as well. Uh, obviously, on attacks, you can, <coughs> excuse me, oh, uh, you can leave this back uh, and then just tap it if you need to to boost uh, or, or to neuter one of their creatures and then hopefully kill it in combat. So I actually really like this. I think I like it more than Lava Spike, but that may be incorrect. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Peer Through Depths is an instant arcane spell as well. For one in a blue, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This is a very, very classic dig through your deck kind of thing. It's perfectly fine. It's very, very serviceable at two. Uh, it's also an instant and arcane is kind of random buff as well. Uh, but being able to dig through your deck for an instance or sorcery in a spells matter deck, that's great. I would much rather be in the spells matter decks already, uh, but this is definitely a card that that deck wants. So if I'm in that strategy, I'd take it. Definitely not a first pick, though. <coughs> Uh, Raven's Crime is a sorcery for one black target player discards a card and then you can retrace this so you can cast this from your graveyard by discarding a land card and paying the additional cost of just one black uh, and so I actually in constructed really like this card for eight rack uh, that's commonly where it's seen most because it's just a repeated discard effect and that's all that that deck really looks to do uh, in, in limited, excuse me, it's not really my favorite. I don't think it does that much. Your opponent gets to pick the card, and so for that reason, uh, it's not really that great. Uh, it's okay, but not amazing. <coughs> excuse me, guys, my throat is a little itchy today. Uh, careful Consideration is an instant for two and two blue. Target player draws four cards, then discards three. 
If you cast this spell during your main phase, instead that player draws four, then discards two. This is a very, very powerful draw spell. Drawing four cards is a lot. You also get to discard two if you do this during your main phase, which is oftentimes where you're gonna do that. It's just a very, very functional spell at instant speed though. If you need to play it on your opponent's turn, that's perfectly fine. You do have to discard more, <coughs> but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you do get to pick those discards as well. So I actually really like this card. I don't know. I think I like it more than the Recluse. Uh, it's just more draw is so, so powerful. Uh, a lot of times limited players uh, will say draws are not the best. I've said that as well. And I do stand by that. However, drawing four cards means you're really, really sculpting your hand. That is a lot of cards. And for four mana, that's pretty efficient as well. So you do discard, but you get to choose them. I think that that makes this a very, very powerful draw spell. Uh, Marsh Flitter is a 1-1 one, one for three and a black. It is a fairy rogue, which I don't know. I don't think that the rogue thing has any tribal synergies in this set, but I could be wrong. Uh, when Marsh Flitter enters the battlefield, put two 1-1 one, one black goblin rogue creature tokens onto the battlefield. You can sacrifice a goblin and it becomes a th the Marsh Flitter becomes a 3-3 three, three until the end of the turn. This is a very powerful card in my opinion. Not only is it a 3 for 1 right off the bat, but it has the added bonus of being able to turn itself into a 3-3 three, three for sacrificing one of the creatures it creates. That's very, very good. Uh, for me, this is definitely so far the pick. It's just a very good evasive flyer, a uh, very, very good threat in general, and so I like it a lot. <coughs> uh, Pardic Dragon is a 4-4 four, four for 4 and 2 red. It does have flying and then you can pay uh, a red and it gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn. You can also suspend it for two, uh, for two red. Uh, and then whenever an opponent casts a spell, if this is suspended, that player may put a time counter on Pardic Dragon. Because of that line of text, I really don't like this card. <coughs> Excuse me guys, so sorry. Uh, if it wasn't for that line of text, this card would be very, very overpowered uh, in my opinion. I think it's very, very powerful for sure, but uh, because you're most oftentimes going to be able to suspend this early on, you're going to probably favor that, but it's probably not going to come down for potentially the whole game, because if you're playing even just one spell a turn, that's going to keep your opponent off, or that's going to keep you off of this card. And so I don't really like it for that reason. I would definitely rather have the Marsh Flitter. And then our rare is Academy Ruin. So it's actually a pretty valuable card. Uh, it's a legendary land that taps for one of any color. You can then pay one in a blue and tap it to put target artifact card from your graveyard on top of your library. This really only has synergy in the affinity deck and the artifacts matters deck at the very least. Uh, for that reason, not super exciting in limited and constructed. It's very, very good. There's a lot of uh, functionality and synergies with this card, but again, in limited, not so spectacular. And then we do have a foil Terramorphic Expanse which is a land that you can tap and sacrifice to pull a basic land card from your battlefield, uh, from your library, excuse me, and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Definitely not the pick, but if you're in multiple colors, it's a very, very good card to have for sure. For me, it's a pretty easy Marsh Flitter. Very, very happy with the Academy Ruins pickup as well, but the Marsh Flitter is definitely my pick for limited. If you disagree, please let me know in the comment section below. But as always, if you liked this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Cracker Pack episode.